All right, so we're going to start off where we left off last time and um, talk a little bit more about field annotations. And field annotations are used for, uh, among other things, determining validation. Uh, you can also specify how you want the field displayed. In other words, what the title of the field is and so on. So let's look at what we had last time. And we'll run it, make sure that it works the way that we expect it to. And the movie tutorial, we come up with a page for movies and we can enter movies in. So. I think where we left off last time is we had a spot for director and uh, we did not uh, put that in the ad. We put that only in the edit. Want the screen on? Do I want the screen on? Yes, I do. Thank you for letting me know. I usually do that like as soon as I come in the room, but I've noticed that like, for example, if I were to look at my emails or something, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't necessarily want those to be broadcast up uh, on the screen. And uh, also, you know, you type in passwords. I wouldn't necessarily want to, if I mistype something, be able to see the password. So, but anyhow, yeah, I forgot. All right, we can create a new. Movie. And I created a new field for director, but I didn't add it to director. We'll do that at some point in this uh, in this class. We'll add it to the other fields. All right. What I want to do is I want to add what are called uh, data annotations. You notice that we brought in this library of data annotations that we're going to use. So, there's actually the tutorial for this week actually is uh, data annotations for this movie example. So, we can look at it. And in the interest of typing, I'm just going to copy and paste. In the interest of time, rather, I'm just going to copy and paste instead of typing. And we'll look and see what all they mean. They talk about something here that's kind of interesting and a good guideline for any kind of software development that you do. They said a key tenet of software development is called DRY, D R Y. Do not repeat yourself. So the idea is, is if something is coded in one place. It should not be coded uh, in other places as well. For example, validation rules. Uh, certain things on a movie are probably required, right? A title is probably required. Doesn't make sense to say, well, we have a movie that was released in, uh, you know, January of 2023, but uh, we don't have the title of it. Doesn't make sense. So we declare these validation rules one place in the model. And we can then use them throughout Razor page application. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. And we will replace this. And we need to make sure we are using the same libraries.
All right. Now, here's an interesting thing. Strictly speaking, I don't have to update the database at this point. Uh, this is for, um, but I, I probably should. So let me go and let me go and update the database. I believe you can make some of these validation rules, uh, add some of them without having to, to uh, update the beta database. But now that I think about it, I would go ahead and do that anyhow. I'm going to add. Be does not contain. Oh, screwed up. I when I copied over, I replaced. Got rid of the ID. I was going to say if this goes wrong, this is going to be a long lecture. I should be able to save it and I should be able to go and add new migration, update the database. All right. Actually, now that I think about it, I guess I could change some annotations without updating the database, but we are changing requirements like whether the field's required or not. And for those, you would need to update the database. You have to keep your model in sync with the actual database. So forget where I said that you do not need to update the database. There are very rare occasions where you wouldn't, but for all intents and purposes, if you update the model, update the database. Okay, so let's look at what's, what some of these things say. These are extra annotations for this. So if we look, this says that we're, we're allocating 60 spaces for the title, and the title has to at least be three characters. And also that it's required, so we can't have a movie without a title. This one says that data type is the date. So in other words, although we're actually, the data type is actually a date time, we're only interested in the date part of that. So if we're looking at the date that this movie was released, we don't care that it was released at two o'clock on January 1st. We're just interested it was released on January 1st. This specifies that the price is between 1 and 100. We're going to format it as currency. And the type is going to be 18 characters, comma, 2. So we're going to have two decimal points. This one is required. Bang length of 30. And it can only uh, accept letters. We'll come back to this one in, in a minute. All right. Same thing with rating. Only it's five characters are required. And, excuse me, we don't have anything for director uh, because that, that's what we just added. So let's look at what happens now when we go and run this. We go and run this. If I go and try to add a movie, 
First of all, notice the column header says release date. By default, the name of the field in the model is going to be what we display. So for example, price is displayed as price. Genre is genre. The field name here is release date, but because we said the display name is release date, it's going to display it with the space. So I could change this to. Date of release. And if we looked up that movie. Instead of release date, it says date of release. Uh, that's important because we can't always have control about what we call our columns in the database. Sometimes people have, uh, you know, use, make use of abbreviations in database column names. And some of those may be not easily understandable by someone who doesn't know the database very well. So what we can do is we can display a name that will make sense to the user, regardless of what the field is called in the database. So let's look at the validation here. Let's go and enter a new one. If I try to save this, it'll give me an error on all these required fields. Because we said it was required, it's telling us that the title field is required, the data release is required, the genre is required, the prices required. I'm going to just put in A, B. Field title must be a string with at least a minimum of three and a maximum of 60 characters. So A, B is not allowed for that. Why is it not allowed? Well, because when we declared that we've specified that the minimum length of the title is three and are 60 characters for that. I could hit only allows up to 60 characters. I can't add anything beyond that. All right, release date. By default, I get this calendar control. I can go and pick a date from, fills it in. Notice, even though this is a date time field, I'm only seeing the date portion of it. Right. This is pointing to another great principle of computer programming, and that is that the data can be stored in one way and displayed in another form, either with a different title or a different format or whatever. The genre, we said, I think, up to 30 characters for that. Let's take a look. Thirty characters is required, and it has to match this. It has to start with a capital letter. Then it can have a list of any mix of capital and small letters. So I can't type in. Lie on me. I guess I can't put spaces in. I can't put in by two because field genre must match the regular expression. This now, if you're doing this in a real application, you would come up with a better error message than that because most users aren't going to understand what that is. And likewise, the price is required. And it has to be between zero and a hundred. So if I make it too big or I make it too small, it gives me an error. And everything's okay. I can click create. And
Okay, it's not letting us go by. And this is an interesting circumstance because it looks like it is validated correctly. Let's run it through debugger and see if we can figure out what is wrong here. I'm actually going to go into, I do recall seeing this error at one point in the past. Let's go and look at the create. I'm going to put the debugger and have a breakpoint right here. Because if I remember that sometimes this, uh, this uh, gives an error um, on certain fields, it might be because we haven't defined the director field in here yet. Let's take a look at and run it. I hit create, I'm at that breakpoint. I can hover my mouse over this field to see what it says. And it says that the model is not valid. That means it found a validation error, even though we don't see a validation error in here. And that's curious. So what are we gonna do? We're actually gonna look at I'm going to display the model state. That shows me that there is five errors or five validation items in here and an error count of one. Right? And it's unvalidated. I'm uh, surprised that I am not seeing. Oh, here we go. Here's the window I was looking for. The watch, the watch uh, window. If I look here, it says there's, there's one error. If I look at the values, it shows me these four things, genre, That rule is valid. Be price. That one is valid. Movie title. That is valid. This one, movie rating, is telling me the movie rating is invalid. Let's see what's going on with the movie rating. I'm going to continue. Stop debugging. Has to be five characters? Did I not have five characters before? 
must not have. Let's try that again. Um, I was thinking like it being G or PG. I don't know what the rating means. Maybe it's like five stars. Oh, right. Oh. Ah. Rating, we don't have uh, entry for the rating. All right. That's why it's invalid. Now, here's an interesting thing. Uh, it allowed us to do that and create it, and yet the validation rule kicked in, all right? Uh, the rating must have been a field that they added since, uh, since, the, uh, uh, since the, the part of the tutorial I did. So let's go back and we added it. Let's go back and add it to the insert and update mode. So let's go here. So I'm going to go back in and add that to the screen. And go from there. Now, that was sort of a tricky problem. I kind of knew what the problem was, although I didn't know the specific cause of it. It is valuable to note, though, that I was able to figure out the problem precisely because I was able to go into debug. And follow exactly what was going on. We might as well add the director when we're here as well. I think that's all we need to do. Let's run it and find out. can put in Avengers 2, we can put in a release date of this date, genre sci-fi, rating five stars. Director. Uh, director, um, I don't know who directs the Avengers movies, we'll say Smith, and price 10. And it's now going to tell us that that is valid, so we can just continue, and it added that to the list. Okay, we went a little bit different direction than I expected, uh, but it's good to see how debugging can be used to precisely find what's going wrong. Without that, I could have stared at that forever and not realized that rating was a field in the database. And we had it, uh, we had it uh, indicated as required. Uh, and yet we didn't have a, uh, a text box for it. Yes. Is it supposed to be in that too or no? Well, we haven't put it there yet, but we can. Let's go and do that. This is showing that when you do make a change to the database, you may have to go back and manually update these fields. Therefore, it's sort of a good idea to understand in basic terms what these uh, what this code is doing. So we're going to display the display name for.
rating field and for director. So if you make a change to the database, you will likely have to go in and change the code that you already had prior to the database. So now we have the rating and the director in there. We should put it in the details and delete, but we won't. That would be the same thing that we uh, that would be the same way that we did it for the um, index and the add. All right. What I'd like to do now is go over a brand new example. And this is an example that we're going to use later on in the course, but we're going to sort of get our feet wet here. There was a example called the Contasso University model. And we're going to go and we're going to create the start of that application. So let's go in here and start Visual Studio. We're going to do this from scratch. New project. And it is going to be an ASP.NET core web application using Razor Pages. Next. Or Contasso University. We will put it on the desktop. Place the solution and project in the same directory, sure. And we're going to do ASP.NET 6.0. Um, no authentication type. In other words, we're not worried about logging on at this point. And we click create. All right, so I'm going to create my models folder. And in that folder, I'm going to add new item. And it's going to be a class. The class name is going to be student CS. A model is just a C sharp class. So that's why I can go and do that. I'm going to add it. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to paste the code that I got online. There are some properties. Again, the date that we have for the enrollment date is we're just interested in a date.
We want to make this nullable like it suggests. We put a question mark there. That means that it will allow nulls. Well, that's probably not a good idea with name, right? So I probably wouldn't do that. But that's what the question mark after the type means. It means that you can put a null in it. I'm going to go here and say it's required. And I'm going to go here and say it's required. All right, so I have my model. Make sure that that's safe. I'm going to go here and I'm going to scaffold my pages. So underneath pages, I'm going to add a folder. And I'm going to call the folder different than the name of the model. The name of the model is students, so I'm going to call it plural. I'm going to call them the new folder students. I don't know if this is something that they fixed, but at one point in time, if you use the same name for the model as the folder, it got very confused. So I'm not going to tempt fate. I'm going to name the folder differently than I named the model. All right. I can right mouse there and I can say add new scaffolded item. And we can scaffold a lot of different things. We are interested in Razor Pages using Entity Framework create, retrieve, update, and delete function or the CRUD function. We hit add. What model do we want to use? Well, the model that we created. What's the context? We don't have a context declared yet. Remember, context is roughly equivalent to database. So we're going to create a database and we're going to give it this name. And it's going to go and do its thing. Created models, scaffold pages. The final step is to update the database. I go to new get package manager. I create a migration. And I update the database. Okay, now when I run this, oh, one other thing I have to do, I have to add it to the navigation. So I'm going to go to the shared layout and I'm going to make This students, the name of the pages folder I created. I can create a new one. And give an enrollment date. We can view the list. I want it, I want you to get to where you could do this in your sleep. Okay. 
So it's so straightforward to go through the steps that I just went through right now when I created the Contasso University uh, web application, where you can go and you can generate, create the new application, where you can create a model, where you can scaffold the model, where you can update the database, you can add it to the navigation, and you should be able to then go and maintain that table. Now, as I said before, if I make changes to the model at this point, I'm going to have to re-update the database by creating a new migration and updating the database again. I'm also going to go, as I found out with great pain, go back to my web pages and add the new field in. So if I added a new field for students after I updated the database, I would have to go in and change the create page, change the edit page and uh, change the, uh, you know, change all the pages that, it, that, uh, that are part of the student uh, pages. I talked briefly about regular expressions. And I want to show those in more detail. Because they are confusing. But there's some good news. Let's say I want to do, I want a regular expression for social security number. What's the format for a social security number? Well, 999-9999-9999. It'll show you here in C sharp what the regular expression is for that. And in this case, it's just 999-9999-9999. There also is cheat sheet. It shows you what these different things mean and other pages that give you examples. So here's where you, if you want to validate to make sure that you got an email address from these three specific domains, if these were the three domains that you allowed, this would be the regular expression for it. They have an explanation of how that works. Match any IP address within the range 192.168.1 to 192.168.1255. It shows you the regular expression for that. We want to do the regular expression for an email account, email address. It shows you the regular expression to use. 
I don't expect you in this class to be an expert in regular expressions. However, you should have, kind of have an idea of what they are. And what essentially they are is you're defining a pattern that the data must match in order to be considered valid. You know, we can talk about what we would what would be a uh, a valid email address and a valid email address would be some characters an at sign some characters dot some more characters regular expressions are just a, a formal way of defining that so that we can put it in code we can't say in our code well allow some characters an at sign you know that doesn't make sense we have to be very precise and that's what regular expressions provide for us All right, are there any questions about this? One thing you should do and when you generate this is you should go back and look through the code that got generated and start to get an understanding of how the razor page and the model that CS file behind the razor page work together in creating the output that the razor pages do. Okay, there are no further questions. That's all I had for today. Uh, we'll either see you in lab or we will see you uh, next week.